This equation requires us to solve, well, 1 over x plus 4 minus 1 over x plus 5 equals 1 half for x. So the first step is, as always, to factor out all the denominators, which we can't do. So we move on to finding the LCDs. So the, for the LCD, we write down all the denominators, x plus 4, x plus 5, and 2. Might need a little more space here. So how do we cancel out an x plus 4? Well, with an x plus 4. So we need an x plus 4 in the numerator of each of these fractions. Next, I move on to x plus 5. Well, how do I cancel an x plus 5 with an x plus 5? So we introduce an x plus 5 in all the numerators for the LCD. And then lastly, how do we cancel out a 2 with a 2? So from this, hopefully we can see that the LCD is 2 times x plus 4 times x plus 5. Now we need to multiply each term of the equation by the LCD to clear all the fractions out. So 1 over x plus 4 times 2 x plus 4 times x plus 5 minus 1 over x plus 5 times 2 x plus 4 x plus 5 equals 1 half times 2 times x plus 4 times x plus 5. So we've multiplied each term of the equation by the LCD. So here the x plus 4 cancels with the x plus 4 x plus 5 goes away, and the 2's go away. So what we have left over is 1 times 2, which is 2, times x plus 5, minus 1 times 2 again, which is 2 times x plus 4, equals x plus 4 times x plus 5. Now we have to FOIL out or distribute if possible. In this particular case, both are possible. We can distribute the left-hand side and FOIL out the right-hand side. So if we distribute the 2, we should get 2x plus 10. When we distribute the negative 2, we get negative 2x minus 8 equals, now we FOIL out the right-hand side. So that gives us x squared plus 5x plus 4x plus 20. So we've done that. Now the next thing to do is to multiply out products and then combine like terms. So we've already multiplied or foiled things out. We've distributed the 2 and the negative 2. So at this stage we can combine like terms. So 2x will cancel with the negative 2x. The 8 minus, I'm sorry, the 10 minus the 8 would give us a 2. And then for the right hand side the 5x plus the 4x would give us a 9x. So we copy down the x squared plus the 9x plus the 20. So we have multiplied everything out. We've combined like terms. And at this stage, we have a quadratic equation. We know it's quadratic because the highest power is 2. How do we solve these? Well, we set them equal to zero first, then we factor, and then we use the zero product property to set each factor equal to zero. So we start by moving the two to the other side, so I can set it equal to zero. So I get zero equals x squared plus 9x plus 20 minus 2, which gives us x squared plus 9x plus 18. And now we uh, have to factor the right-hand side. So there is no GCF, three terms. The formulas could work because it's plus, 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 but 18 is not a perfect square, so the formulas are out. Next, we look at the leading coefficient. It is 1, so the AC method is going to be the method of choice. So we factor 18. 1 and 18, negative 1, negative 18, 2 and 9, negative 2, negative 9, 3 and 6, negative 3, negative 6, 4 doesn't work, 5 doesn't work, 6 is already in our list. So that's all the factors there are. And here we're looking for 3 and 6. 
So the right-hand side factors to x plus 3 times x plus 6. And because we have a 0 on one side and a product on the other side, we can invoke the zero product property, which says either x plus 3 must equal 0, or x plus 6 must equal 0. And if we solve each of these equations for x, we get x equals negative 3, or x equals negative 6. Now again, these are potential solutions. In order to verify if they're solutions or not, we have to plug them into the original equation, which is 1 over x plus 4 minus 1 over x plus 5 equals 1 half. So if x equals negative 3, we get 1 over negative 3 plus 4 is 1, minus 1 over uh, negative 3 plus 5 is 2, equals 1 half. And this is just 1 minus a half equals a half. I already know this is true because if I have a whole pizza and I eat half of it, I have half a pizza left. So this is a true statement, which means x equals negative 3 is indeed a solution to the equation. Now we have to verify x equals negative 6. This would turn into 1 over negative 6 plus 4, which is negative 2, minus 1 over negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1, equals 1 half. 1 over negative 2 is, well, just negative 1 half. Minus 1 over negative 1 would be negative 1. Negative and a negative is a positive, so this turns into negative 1 half plus 1 equals 1 half, which is, again, 1 half equals 1 half. Also a true statement, which means both of these numbers are solutions to our equation. So you would write, as a summary, x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 6 are the solution to the equation.